this here is the message for Aaron Ra concerning his dead granddaughter. Rest in peace. <laughs> Either that or R-I-H roast in hell. Which one is it, Aaron Ra? The following, Aaron Ra, the following is a true story by J. Harold Smith, Southern Baptist Evangelist. True story that he was personally involved in. About a 14-year-old girl. How old, was, how old was your granddaughter when she died? Well, listen to this story. About something that happened to a 14 year old girl. J. Harold Smith tried to get her to get saved. And this 14 year old girl refused. And God killed and God killed her. And just listen. To hear her describe. She's about to go to hell. And just know this. You better hope. There is no hell. Because if there is. Your granddaughter, who you love so much, is having the same experience as this girl right here, burning in the hell, burning in the everlasting flames of hell. I was going to revive a meeting, preach this sermon. When I gave the invitation, over 90% of all the people in the audience, the Christians, the backsliders, the sinners, over 90% of the people got up out of their seat. It's just like you dismissed them. But they were, there was, a, there was a, a man and a woman and a little girl on the fourth pew right here in this section. They didn't move. And I felt impressed to go speak to them. So I pushed my way through this crowd, stepped on the bench, stepped over the next one, over the next one. And I stopped right in front of the mayor and I said, sir, are you saved? He said, yes, I am, preacher. Then I said, ma'am, are you saved? She said, yes, I am. Then I turned to the little girl and I said, honey, are you saved? She said, no, sir. I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 14. I said, what is your name? She said, my name is Katie. I said, Katie, you're just a young lady, just 14 years old. Do you ever think about giving your heart to Jesus? Oh, she said, maybe sometime. I said, Katie, if somehow or another you could know that you'd be dead before midnight, would you let me pray for you? She folded her little arms across her chest like that and said, no, sir. Her dad started crying. He said, Katie, would you let me pray for you? No, Daddy, I don't want you to pray for me. Then the mother started crying and said, Katie, would you let me pray for you? No, Mama, I don't want you to pray for me. On their way home that night, they lived three miles out of this little town where I was holding a meeting on the left side of the highway. And the father said, I had my signal going, I was turning left and my hand out. But four drunken men were coming up that highway, and the police said, in excess of 90 miles an hour. The father said, I saw the lights, but he didn't realize they were coming so fast. And before he could turn left and get in his driveway, they struck him. That car rolled over three or four times. The mother was knocked out of the car. The father was knocked out of the car, just bruised up a little bit, but not seriously injured. Well, little Katie was wedged. They had stuck that car right at the back, and little Katie was wedged in that car. And when it stopped rolling, it was upside down. And the man that told me about it, he said, Preacher, I was the second car to arrive on that busy highway. And he said, I want to tell you because this little girl kept calling your name. I want to tell you what happened. He said, I guess maybe in five minutes there must have been 25 cars and maybe 50 people around. And he said the gasoline was gushing out of that tank and running down that highway. And he said this car went on, the hit him, went on about 100 yards and wrecked. And he said, another gentleman and I got up in that back seat trying to get that little girl's legs freed. She was hanging upside down that car. He said, we'd been working with it about five minutes when I saw this flash. And I knew that somebody had set that gasoline on fire. One of those drunken men had got out of the car, lit a cigarette, and threw the match down, and it fell in that gasoline. And he said, I turned to my friend that was on the other side, and I said, we've got about five or ten seconds to get this little girl out of this car. He said, Preacher, I have never put forth such an effort. But he said, I looked, and I knew I had to abandon her. And I got out of that car. And he said, what I heard the next 30 seconds, I'll never forget. 
He said that little girl began to scream. Daddy! Mother! Somebody get me out of this car, Daddy! Mother, I'm going to die. I'm going to go to hell, Mama. I wish I'd have preached. Now, if this girl did not believe in Jesus when she was dying, how did she just know intuitively she was going to go to hell? By the way, if her granddaughter was not born again, she's there with this little girl burning in hell. You don't want to have a family reunion with your granddaughter when you die, Aaron Ra. You better get saved now or you better explain to me scientifically why it is these stories only happen in Christianity. Never Islam, never Hinduism, not even voodoo. Listen to the rest of the story. Christmas Smith prayed for me. He said, what the hell, mama? I wish I had a Christmas Smith prayed for me. He said, preacher, we had to hold that fire to that mother. So I actually believe that it ran, ran, ran right into that fire. But he said, that mother got as close as she could get to that car and said, Katie, can you hear me? Yes, mama. Katie, you are going to die. We can't get you out, honey. You are going to die. Call on the Lord and ask him to save you, honey. Ask him to say, Mama, Mama, I can't pray, Mama. I can't pray. I sat here a moment ago, and I wondered if there's some young person in this house. You got your name on some church road. But you know way down deep in your heart that you've never really been born again. You've never even been saved. You just got brought up in the church. One day you walk down the aisle, you give the piece of your hand, and they baptize you. But you never were born again. You never have become a new child, a new person. I wonder. And Rod, does that describe you and your Christianity? Matt Dillahoney and his Christianity? He walked the aisle. You said the prayer. You were baptized. You became a preacher. But deep down in your heart, you were never born again? Is that why I, Matt Dillahoney and you deconverted? Because you didn't have that inner knowledge of Jesus? That's just a fact, sad fact of life. I don't like it anymore, but if your granddaughter was not saved, she's burning in hell that other little girl I wish God loved us all but you know God is uh, and uh, God is a uh, consuming fire but Aaron Ra this is my evidence why do you keep running from me you fat overfed stuffed son of a bitch atheist pig meet me in this video dialogue I'm just a fa I'm just facing your fucking computer screen I can't do anything do you and you can't do anything to me, but you yell and scream at me. Bring it on, Aaron, Aaron Rob. Bring it on. Bring it on. Debunk my... If, if you're truly an atheist and not afraid of my evidence, if this evidence doesn't spark something deep within that you would not admit troubles your waters. Bring it on. Are you too pussy? You fat, stuffed, atheist, pussy, son of a cunt, goddamn I wish I could see you and Howard Storm discuss these topics. He was a militant atheist in the 80s, but he had a near-death experience, met Jesus. I wish I could... No, yeah, I do. But Aaron, Aaron Ra, bring it on! Hey, maybe you'll get the chance to meet me face-to-face -face and try to kick my ass. But... The fact run that means your granddaughter is dead and you better make sure there's no hell because if so if there is a hell like this little 14 year old girl in this story that really happened she's there and that don't don't say don't you dare say this is anecdotal evidence there are preachers by the t there are shitloads of preachers from the early 1900s who have similar stories of people who died after either blaspheming the Holy Ghost or refusing to get saved when they were offered the chance to become a Christian. That's too many. 
okay, if, if there's just one story like this, is and you could dismiss it, but when stories like this are consistent all around the United States of America, motherfucker, you better listen. You better. You better either listen to the stories or find a way to debunk them. Because if we can't debunk them, and don't hand me this shit, it's, it's, not, it's not an atheist to debunk to prove their point. Listen, goddamn motherfucker. This evidence that I got, it, this is positive evidence. I dare you. Are you smart enough to, but to, you can't debunk this. But bring it on. And just know this. You're... What do you grand? What does your granddaughter and this doll have in common? They both look like a female, but they're both dead. <laughs> Duh.